I'm not really a raft guide. I row a boat a lot, yeah, but it's not my only job. I keep people safe. Some people who would be lost out here, not just physically. I keep people fed. I'm a cook. Frittata, prime rib, pineapple upside down cake, salmon fillets, cornbread with honey butter. I only make about half of that. Frittata's pretty simple. Prime rib scares me. It's the main course of the last night's meal and when you mess up, everybody knows it. The salmon fillets I don't offer to help with. Instead, I stick to what I know. I make the salad, I steam broccoli. I'll set up the serving table and then I'll run down to the boats to get more wine. Ninety-nine percent of the time I'm doing something besides rowing a boat through a big rapid. I'm cooking, sleeping, or trying not to. I'm loading boats, unloading boats, setting up tents, and setting up a groover. I'm watching people fish, or swim, or drink. I'm talking with guests. I'm drinking with guests. I'm sharing little pieces of myself to strangers, most of whom I won't ever see again. That's why we call it river guiding instead of raft guiding. I'm a guide on this river not just a guide on this raft. Some things about the job suck. Cleaning groovers is what everybody thinks of first. Yeah, that sucks sometimes, but poop is a fact of life and it's not that bad. It's just poop. Here are some things that suck. Working 30, 16 hour days straight. We get an hour of downtime every day or two, but still, it wears on me. Being nice all the time gets old too but we work for tips, so. Working with the same guides for weeks straight can also get old. Something as small as stopping for lunch at what another guide thinks is a dumb place can piss them off, and that pisses me off. These little cracks in our team can add up and can be draining. Luckily, most of the guides are good at laughing it off. And luckily, I work in the middle fork, which makes the bad parts of the job worth it. The middle fork of the salmon is in central Idaho. It's as far as you can get from roads in the west. It's a small tactical river. We were on five or six day trips. The first and the last day are the most exciting. The top is quick, technical, and tight. The bottom, impassable canyon, it is beautiful, but can be scary at high water. Each trip has between 20 and 30 people on it. The salmon gets its name from the Chinook salmon that spawn at its headwaters each year. We don't see many of them because of the dams downstream on the Snake in Columbia, but we do see some and the best time to see them is in July, when they jump Dagger Falls. For many of them, it's their last obstacle before they can spawn. We also see them spawning downstream of Dagger sometimes when we deadhead. Deadheading is an old trucking term, guides adapted for the river. It means driving with an empty trailer or load. On the river, it means rowing a boat without guests or much gear. In late July and August, there isn't much water in the upper half of the river. It becomes very, very difficult to get a fully loaded boat downstream. It can feel like trying to pull a square raft through a round hole. It just doesn't work. To make it easier at low water, we fly gear and people downstream 20 miles below the most difficult rapids. The guides then row the near empty boats those first 20 miles and pick up the gear and the guests. Deadheading is one of the best parts of being a Middle Fork guide. A full day of technical class 3 and 4 rafting with just yourself and a few fellow guides to enjoy it with. Two guys I love to deadhead with are Drew and Joseph. I enjoy making fun of Drew when he gets stuck. And I really want to say that he gets stuck a lot. Definitely more than me. Drew was gone for the last few weeks and didn't get to row the river as it lowered each week. Returning at very low water can be difficult and tiring. Memorizing where the deepest channel is and where not to go is essential. Drew obviously forgot. Here's Joseph. I won't say much about him except he's special and all the moms love him. There are a few difficult spots that I always struggle to make it through without getting out to push. When I mess up and get stuck, I have a whole week to prepare mentally to make it clean the next time. Oh! 
That's a tough move. A sweet boat is a 4,000 pound dump truck without brakes. It's a gear hauler without oars or a seatbelt. It's what every Middle Fork guide works up to. It's the scariest, most demanding and challenging way to get down the canyon. Broken ribs, feet, and dislocated shoulders are real possibilities with any significant mistake. It's the only boat that will have the driver apparently doing nothing for an hour, sitting on their ass, only to have their heart exploding out of their chest at the next rap. I've only been driving sweep for a season. I can't wait to get back to it. The end of the season for me is a lot like the end of the trip for my guests. I look back up the middle fork and wonder when I'll see it again. I feel proud to have rode it again successfully and yet sad that it's over. I can't wait to shower. I always have a renewed excitement for my life beyond the river. Rafting the middle fork is a true American adventure. And I don't say that lightly. I've backpacked, rafted, skied, and climbed all over the West. To me, only a few experiences qualify. The Middle Fork is one of them. And because of that, when people ask me what I do for a living, I smile and say I'm a river guide. <laughs>